Well, well, well. You guys told me not to do another intro like this, but let's do some sound designing, eh? What is going on, Rocket Powered Sound Designers? Welcome to the best channel on YouTube for serum tutorials. And in today's video, we're gonna be checking out how to make or recreate the main lead from Sultan's track, the lead, or the realm, what am I saying? And this is what it sounds like. Pretty cool, right? I think it's super accurate to the original. Why do I keep saying this? It's not accurate, it's accurate. Apparently, I don't understand basic English. So um, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. Now this sound is actually using, uh, the only external effect is x for Records OTT. Go ahead and grab it if you haven't already, or if you're running in Ableton, you can go ahead and use Ableton OTT. It's, you, all you need is an OTT compressor to just kind of even out the levels of the sound. That's it, it's a free plugin. But without further ado, why don't you say, we go right into the video. Um, so first things first, if you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? We literally have the best serum tutorial channel on YouTube. If you don't believe me, go watch some other serum tutorials. You're gonna be like, okay, we want you Rocket Barrett Sound. You're pumping out quality tutorials every single day. Yeah, literally every single day. I'm working on it, baby. And this is, we're just freaking grinding out. So let's go ahead and turn oscillator A to a sawtooth waveform. Now the sawtooth waveform is gonna be the basis, the basis of the sound and this, is what a basic sawtooth sounds sounds like. I'm gonna put my keyboard under my desk so you don't have to hear my annoying keystrokes. Some people were complaining about that. Understandable. All right, perfect. Now, this lead is fat as fudge. So what we're gonna be doing to, to kind of replicate that is we're gonna add on some detune. Well, first things first, to add on detune to our sawtooth waveform, we need to turn up the unison up nine. Now guys, also in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make vibrato inside of Serum because there's not the typical vibrato mo uh, knob like you would get in Native Instruments Massive, for an example. So for let's just keep going. Um, anyways, when we have the unison up nine, as you can see, if you count each of those individual lines, we have a total of nine lines. Those lines each represent a different copy of the waveform that is all gonna be played at a single time in unison. Now, the random phase here is gonna control the space on the phase that these individual copies have to start within. So, um, the highlighted area represents all an area in which each of these different copies can begin their phase of their cycles. So um, we don't even need to touch that. I figured I'd just go ahead and go over quick little demonstration here. We're gonna turn on the detune a little bit. And believe it or not, we're actually gonna be running it just around here, so. That sounds pretty good. Um, now what we're gonna begin doing is we're gonna throw on our sync. The sync here is what's kind of gonna be adding a little bit of a screechy sound. Um, so we can go ahead and create our first LFO. Just go ahead and drop LFO number one onto that sink. And we can just kind of make a shape that goes like this. Maybe add a little bend. Put on trigger. And we're gonna call it a day for this for the sink here. Now Filter, this is when things are start, gonna start to get a little bit of crazy here. We wanna throw on our flanger L6 positive. Um, now the flanger filters here are really, really awesome for adding in tone. First things first, we need to turn up the filter variation up 100% so we get the full effect of the flanger here. And just by simply tweaking the reverb, turning it up a little bit, we immediately get the full presence of the sound here. Pretty nasty. Now, we're just gonna jump LFO1 onto the cutoff here. Oh, my bad. You know what, we need to adjust the cutoff first. We need to find a note or a tone that sounds perfect and is aligned with the particular sound that we're gonna be working with. Now guys, please keep in mind, we're actually not gonna be running keyboard tracking, which will immediately move the cutoff to whatever note that we are pressing on our, our MIDI keyboard, for an example. Um, 
Instead, we're just gonna be letting the filter run its process through the notes, even though the tone may be off at some times. We are really are just using the filter um, for an extra metallic tail on the sound, for an example. So, let's go ahead and actually modulate. Oops. <laughs> And we're gonna take LFO2, put that on there, and we're just gonna be modulating it up one. Now this is gonna give the cutoff a little bit more movement here. And we're actually gonna be leaving this mode on off because it's gonna alternate throughout the notes and give it the sound a lot of variation. Put the rate on one half. Now I actually turned octave or oscillator a up two octaves when I was working with the sound just because I quickly wanted to adjust the octaves. I didn't feel like adjusting all of the mini notes altogether. I instead I just turned it up. And that's exactly what we have so far. Not the prettiest sound in the world, but trust me, we are getting somewhere. Head over into the effects section, and now this is when we start to begin our you know our effects here, which are really gonna start to shape the sound itself. If we turn on our EQ, which is gonna be the first effect on our list, we're just going to bump the first curve to a peak, and we're gonna be dropping this right around here, turn up the frequencies, frequency a little bit. And if you hear that, we're basically emulating a notch filter, which is pretty, pretty tight. And that's what it sounds like in the original sound. A notch filter has a very distinct sound of just kinda like, you, wait, you, Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that, but if you guys are familiar with Massive at all, a double notch filter is almost like a more amplified version of this. So go ahead and check that out in there so you can get an understanding um, because these these sounds are actually very distinctive, which is why I kind of knew right away to kind of create this sound. Um, but anyways, we're gonna be modulating the frequency just like that, okay? Turn the Q factor down. So that way we have a bigger cut. And actually we're gonna be doing the inverse here. We're gonna turn up the gain a tad bit here. Um, and one of the key little things here, if we ever work with the PP filters, if we move the two fre uh, peaked frequencies together towards each other. Now guys, this is in the PP filter. Okay, haha, -ha, so funny, PP, I get it guys. But when we're working the PP filter, um, when we move the two frequencies towards each other, it sounds like it's talking. And that's kind of what this bass why do I keep saying bass? This lead um, in Sultan's track sounds like. So although we're not necessarily using the same, um, we're cutting out one frequency and we're gaining the other, it's going to create a same little vocal effect, it's similar. So if I were to turn off the EQ, turn it on. You can hear there's a little bit of a vocal element to it. Pretty cool. Now, filter. The first things first, I knew that there was a reverb filter put on this sound. As soon as I heard the little breakdown toward near the end of the drop, he does mess around with the reverb quite a bit. And it almost sounds like he's playing around with the reverb filter a little bit too much. Believe it or not, we're just gonna be adjusting, adjusting the cutoff to around 931 hertz. Leaving it there. Turning up the, turning down the mix a little bit, I mean, and then modulating it down. Right now, it's not the prettiest sound in the world, and I totally get that, but let's turn on our multiband compressor and see what that does. Let's just adjust the band a little bit, make it sound a little bit better. Perfect, now we're getting somewhere. Um, another thing that we can do to add on a little bit of the extra metallic tail. Oh, guys, I turned the mix up way too much on the filter. I'm sorry, I had it down to around 70 in the original sound. Whoa, we're getting close. Uh, just mess with the voicing as well. Cool, cool. All right, like I said, we're getting somewhere, boys. And... Well, 1% of my audience that is actually a girl, we're getting somewhere. I know, there's actually 1% of my viewers that is a girl. That is pretty cool. I just did not expect that. <laughs> uh, delay, uh, the, we're just gonna be putting on a short delay onto the sound. Um, when we turn down the 
turn off BPM sync, turn off or turn on link. Oh, I can't even think straight today. I just ate the Shake Shack. Oh my gosh, I am like in a food coma right now. I feel like I'm gonna like barf or something. I just ate way too much food. I don't even know why I'm sharing this with you right now. I'm just crazy. Um, man, Shake Shack's gotta be doing something crazy with their burgers, I could tell you that much. Um, anyways, delay. If I turn off the delay, if I turn it on, you guys hear that extra thickness, that metallic verb on the sound? Pretty fat, I like it. Now, finally, we're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of touches. We got hyper and dimension, and then we're gonna be getting into the vibrato, which is really, really cool. You guys already understand how the hyper works if you watch my tutorials, so I'm not gonna bore you guys with the same old, same old. If you don't already understand, just watch my last tutorial, because I actually go through why we do that in my last tutorial. So go ahead and check that out. I'm not gonna keep boring my fans. My diehard fans, I love you guys. So, reverb. Ever so slightly do we need this reverb. Ever so slightly. All right, so right now we have the sound down for the most part, except we're missing out on the reverb. Now, how do we have reverb inside of Serum? Like, do you see a reverb knob? Or, I'm sorry, reverb? What am I saying? Vibrato, oh my gosh. I'm not even kidding you. Shake Shack is making me crazy. Last time I eat there, before I record a video, okay? Not the last time I eat there, that place is good. Um, but, <laughs> I am so off track right now. Um, what we do here, there's no vibrato knob anywhere inside of Serum, so we're gonna make one. We go into the matrix here, and this is super, super handy. We go and choose our macro one. Macro one's gonna be modulating um, and changing the amplitude of our vibrato. And we're just gonna go to LFO one, and we're gonna select, or I'm sorry, LFOs, and we're gonna select it's some unused LFO. In this case, I'm using LFO 3. LFO 3 is right. Okay, so we can have the vibrato control the rate, number one, the rate of LFO 3. So we're going to turn off BPM sync. And now we're going to go into LFO number 3 and have this control master tune. And we want to create our basic vibrato model, which is just a simple triangle waveform. Let's just snap this to the grid. Now that is a little bit too fast for us, so we can go ahead and turn on the rate. And when we want it on full blast, we want to have it a little bit faster. Now you're probably like, okay, Shane, that did not do much because now we still have vibrato even when the macro is all the way at zero. So what the hell's your problem? Guys, come on, hear me out. You know, I'm here to help. I'm not here to lead you away from good sound design. <laughs> we're gonna go to our auxiliary source and we're simply just gonna select macro one. So macro one will now control the amplitude and the rate of LFO3. And that is how you throw on reverb and make a Sultan lead in a single reverb. Did I say reverb? Vibrato. Freaking Shake Shack, man. It's driving it up the wall. Anyways, that is how you make vibrato and make a Sultan lead in a single serum tutorial. And guys, I know I'm totally off topic today. I'm going crazy. I still hope that you learned something because, you know, I st although I was like all over the place, I had some value, like, right? Anyways, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Drop a comment. Why should you guys think about this sound? Because I already know you guys are gonna be like, wow, Shane, you were crazy in this video. It's not me, okay? It's not me talking, it's a Shake Shack, okay? They're burgers, they got like, like meth in it or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, I'm done going crazy. I'm Shane from Rocket Parrot Zone, and I will catch you guys in the next Serum tutorial.